I want to help you improve and develop your pronunciation skills. And that is why I put together this one hour mega lesson going over some difficult and tricky words to pronounce. And we're going to cover a variety of topics. And if you are someone who would like to improve your pronunciation, please subscribe, turn on notifications. That way I can become your teacher. My name is Wes. The channel is Interactive English. It's all about trying to help you reach your fluency goals. So let, let's get the pronunciation ball rolling with some useful and difficult words to pronounce. 10 words that learners often mispronounce, and I want to tell you how to say these words correctly. Now, keep in mind that I am from the United States, so I'm going to be sharing with you the American pronunciation of these words. So I'll tell you the word and give you the pronunciation. I will show you both the phonetic spelling as well as the IPA. I'm also going to tell you the meaning of the word so that you can better understand how and when the word is used. And finally, I would encourage you to repeat these words after me. As we go through each one, say them out loud, practice speaking, practice your pronunciation because that is the best way to improve. So the first word I have for you is subtle. This word has two syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Subtle. Say it with me. Subtle. What this word means is it's something that is, well, not noticeable or not obvious in any way. But what is obvious is why this word is often mispronounced. And it's because of that B. It is a silent letter, a silent B. You are not going to hear it. Subtle. Also, remember, I'm from the United States, so that T, I'm really saying a flap T, which almost sounds like a very soft D sound. It's a very subtle sound. Subtle. Subtle. Then we have segue. This word also has two syllables, and the stress is on that first syllable. Segue. Segue. It just means a smooth transition. You may segue from one topic to the next and make a smooth transition. The reason why this word, you know, people have trouble with it is because of that spelling. That second syllable is pronounced way. Segue. The next word that I have for you is epitome. This word has four syllables and the stress is on that second syllable, that, that pit. Epitome. And what this means is that, that something is the perfect example of, of some group. Maybe you could say that you have a plate of fruit and vegetables and you could say, wow, this is the epitome of a healthy meal. It is a perfect example of that. The reason why this word, uh, people have some trouble with this word, is because of that third and fourth syllable. That third syllable, you have the schwa, that uh sound. And that final syllable, it's just me, that long E. So that O-M-E spelling, it is really pronounced uh me, epitome, epitome. So let's practice. Say the word with me. This is good shadowing practice. Epitome, epitome. Something is the epitome of something else. Then we have candidate. And this word has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Candidate. <laughs> now, the reason why I think uh, this word can be a little confusing is because I will be honest with you. I think there are quite a few people out there that kind of just eliminate that D. Even though the word, it does have that D sound, candidate. Candidate. Also, that, that final syllable, some people may say it with a dut and others may say it with a dit. Candidate. I say it more with a dit. Candidate. <laughs> candidate and well, what a candidate is, it's a person who wants to be elected for a certain position. So this is a word that you will, you will hear a lot of if you happen to follow, well, politics in any country. In, in the U.S., it is a word, if you are following U.S. politics, this is a word that you may hear a lot, that somebody is the candidate. The candidate. Say it with me. Candidate. And then say it as fast as you can. Candidate. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's enough. Let's, let's move on to the next word. Literally. Now, this word has four syllables, and the stress is on that first syllable. That third syllable, it, it has that schwa, that uh literally. And when somebody uses this word, it's talking about, well, it's saying that something is word for word, that that, that is the way it is. 
literally. Now, I, I think one reason why some learners have trouble with it is because of that L and R. You, you have quite a few of those letters in this one word, literally. Say it with me, literally. Again, you, because I am from the United States, I say this word more with that flap T sound. So that T in the middle, it's going to sound like a, a soft D sound. It is a subtle D sound, literally, literally. And the next word that I have for you, <laughs> I literally forgot what the next word is. Let, let me get it for you. The next word is meme. So. I think this is a great word because it's it's kind of a new word. It's becoming more popular nowadays with the internet. But this word, it just has one syllable, meme. Meme. And what it is, it is kind of, well, it is a typically an image that has been altered in some way. And it's it can be a bit of a, a cultural or social commentary. And it's it's changed in a way so that it's it's supposed to be a little humorous. Meme. But I, I think the spelling is what again throws some learners off because I have had learners pronounce this word as meme. I've had people say it's meme. But this word, I think it slightly it's pronounced the way it's spelled with that long E sound. Meme. Meme. I'll give you an example of a meme. I don't know why I, I really like this one right here. And I think, yes, I think they are mocking that dog. <laughs> it's quite funny. This is a meme. The next word is debut. It has two syllables and the stress is on that second syllable. And the a debut is just the first appearance of something or, or even someone, debut. The reason why I think this word is often mispronounced is because you're you're not going to hear that that t at the end of the word. It's almost that second syllable. You're just you're just saying the letter u, u debut, debut. For example, I could say that I made my debut on YouTube in 2017. It's been about it's been about three years exactly. Wow. Time flies. The next word is albeit. This word has three syllables and the stress is on that second syllable. Albeit, albeit. And this word just means it's the same as although, albeit. I could say that, well, maybe I, I really want a vacation and I take one. I said, well, it was a very relaxing, albeit short vacation albeit. One way that I think, well, one way to think about this word to help you pronounce it is that you can really break this word into those three syllables and pronounce the word the, the, the way it looks. All be it. All be it. All be it. The next word is resume. This word has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. So I'm talking about the noun resume. And what that is, it's it's just your CV. It is a written account of your, your personal work experience, your education resume. But I think learners quite, quite often confuse it with the verb resume, which has two syllables and the stress is on the second syllable, resume. But we're talking about the noun, your resume, my resume. Maybe somebody needs to update their resume. So be careful because if you are talking about the noun, you want to say resume. Next is my favorite word on the list and that is kibosh. This word has two syllables and the stress is on that first syllable and I just like saying it with a lot of emphasis and energy. Kibosh. To put the kibosh on something. And what this word means is just to to put an end to something, to put the kibosh on something. You are putting an end to this thing. So I could say, well, I'm gonna put the kibosh on your plans. I'm gonna put an end to it. So you make sure that you, if you want to try to use this word, to use it with that phrase, put the kibosh on something. But keep in mind, this is a very informal expression. It's not something you're going to hear in everyday English. It's just a fun word, so I wanted to share it with you. But if, if you hear it or you, you see this word when reading a story, it's pronounced kibosh, to put the kibosh 
on something. I really hope that you you thought this lesson was the epitome of a wonderful pronunciation lesson. And I, well, I hope that you reward me, which is a subtle hint for you to hit that like button. Let's now transition to a topic that we talk about regularly, food, or at least I talk about it regularly. But because this is often discussed in spoken English, you want to make sure that you are pronouncing different food words correctly if you are out at a restaurant or even over at a friend's house. Therefore, I've put together a group of food words that are commonly mispronounced. I'm going to talk about 10 words, 10 food words that are difficult to pronounce. Now, they may be difficult because of the way they're spelled or the way the, the syllable is stressed. And what we're going to do is I'm going to tell you the word and repeat it again and again and again so you can hear the correct pronunciation. I will tell you how many syllables the word has and which one is stressed. In addition, I will give you the phonetic spelling so that you, you can see how the pronunciation is really spelled. And I'll just give you a little information about the food in general, mostly my opinion, just to spice things up. So let's begin. The first word is zucchini. Zucchini, this word has three syllables and the stress is on that second syllable, that key. And that's where it confuses people because of this spelling, that, that C-C-H-I just has that key sound, zucchini, zucchini. You could say it with me, zucchini. Now. I am somebody who really doesn't have to worry about the pronunciation of this word because I don't like zucchini. I don't really eat zucchini. I'm never asking for zucchini. I'm never talking with people about zucchini except for right now. But now you know how to say it if you ever want to ask for it, zucchini. What the hell is that? My zucchini casserole. Zucchini. So zucchini, it's kind of leaving a bad taste in my mouth right now. So let's just move on to the next word, which is salmon. This is a very popular fish word. It has two syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Salmon, that second syllable has, has that schwa sound. It's an unstressed syllable. Salmon. And the reason why this word is commonly mispronounced is because of that L. This is a silent L, so you can forget about it, get rid of it when you're saying the word, and you would just ask for salmon. What would you like for dinner? I'd like some salmon. If you like salmon, just let me know. Let me know in the comments. The next word is a great one simply because I think it just tastes really, really good because it's butter, sugar, milk cooked together to give you caramel. And the pronunciation, it, it, it can be debatable a little bit. There are several pronunciations for this word. I think that, that all of them are acceptable, even though I'm sure some people would be like, no, 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 there's only just one way to say it. But I'm gonna tell you all three ways to say caramel. First, you should know that the word has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. That second syllable is gonna have a schwa sound and that final syllable is where you might hear a different pronunciation. People might say caramel and that mull is that third syllable or you might hear people say caramel and mel. So it's a difference between mull and mel. Caramel, caramel. And those are very similar. And I think if you're just having a conversation and you say either one of those, nobody's really going to think about it. But another pronunciation, which is I think becoming more popular in North America, just in North America, is making it a two syllable word and dropping that second syllable and omitting that schwa sound. And people would just say caramel. I say caramel even though I, I think many other English speakers would say caramel or caramel. So now you know how to pronounce all of these different variations of caramel or caramel or caramel. <laughs> you, you decide. Caramels. It's good. It's caramel. I love caramel apples. She can't eat caramel. Try the caramel. It's delicious. Ooh. Next is quinoa. Now, you're probably looking at this word and the way it's spelled, and you're thinking, what the heck? Now, the reason is, is because this is not a word from the US or the UK or Canada, Australia, South Africa, or other English speaking countries. Quinoa is a tall crop that you mainly find in Peru, Bolivia, or Chile. But the word does have two syllables. The stress is on that first syllable, quinoa. Now, 
you might hear it pronounced with three syllables, quinoa, in which case the stress would be on that second syllable, quinoa, and that final syllable would just be that schwa, uh, quinoa, or quinoa. Again, I don't have a problem with this word because I'm never using it. Even though quinoa, I've heard it's very healthy, I, I don't really eat it that often. But in case you like quinoa, now you know how to pronounce it. So let's just move on to the next word, which is a drink. We're, we're switching it up a little. We're going to throw a drink in there. And that drink is a daiquiri. Daiquiri has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Daiquiri. This word can be confusing because that, that Q-U-I can throw people off. It takes on that K sound. So you have daiquiri. That second syllable also has the schwa. Daiquiri. And this drink is a cocktail of rum, lemon or lime, and sugar. It's usually also served with, with some type of fruit. Fun fact, the daiquiri cocktail was invented by an American mining engineer who got the name from a beach in Cuba. And then he introduced the drink to New York City. And from there, the rest is history. So if you like fruity cocktails, then you might want to try a daiquiri. I, I'm not a big fan of daiquiris. I think they're they're too sugary. You haven't tried my daiquiri. How do you say banana daiquiri? Banana daiquiri. Another round of daiquiris. The next word is one of my favorites, guacamole. It is mashed avocados with, with lemon or lime juice, and you you can put it on, on bread. You can use it as a dip. It's just... It's, it's wonderful. I love guacamole. And it has four syllables and the stress is on that third syllable. Now, I am saying it like many Americans say guacamole. Now, it is a Spanish word. And in Spanish, the correct pronunciation would be guacamole. Guacamole. So just, just know that. The correct pronunciation would be guacamole, even though if you, if you travel to the U.S., you might hear a lot of English speakers saying guacamole. Guacamole! I thought it was guacamole! Oh. I used to like guacamole, now I don't like guacamole. Holy moly, that was a lot of guacamole. Next, we have a cheese. A cheese from Italy. Parmesan. It has three syllables and the stress. You might hear it on that first syllable, Parmesan. Or you could hear it on that third syllable and people would say Parmesan. I tend to stress it, I'm trying to think, Parmesan. I think I end up stressing it on that first syllable. One reason this word can be a little confusing is because that S has a Z sound. Parmesan. Parmesan. I'd like some Parmesan cheese. I grew up in the southeast of the U.S. and there you might hear people say Parmesan. I don't know where it came from, but just an FYI, if you're there, you might hear people say, yes, I would like some Parmesan. But I would encourage you just to say Parmesan. Parmesan cheese. You want some Parmesan cheese on that? Also from the great state of Wisconsin, an aged Parmesan. Next is artichoke. This food has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Artichoke. It is a vegetable uh, common, I think, in the Mediterranean. Some people like artichokes. I am not a big fan of artichokes. Now, the word sounds similar to the way it's spelled. The one thing I would tell you about this word is that when you say it in English, that R, it's not a strong R, it's very soft. Artichoke. In some cases, it may sound like people are dropping that R altogether, but I, I think you'll slightly hear it. Artichoke. I don't even know what that is. Artichoke? know that you secretly love artichokes again another food that i don't have to worry about pronouncing artichokes now that i think about it all of the words that i don't have to worry about pronouncing are vegetables that's not good next is the word cinnamon which is a spice a delicious spice this spice has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable, cinnamon. Notice that C is going to have an S sound, and it's followed by the schwa, cinnamon. Cinnamon, it, it, it's great. I love cinnamon rolls. Those are very delicious. If you've never tried them, you should ask for some cinnamon rolls. <laughs> it's not a vegetable, not a healthy food, but it's, it's good. Cinnamon takes a backseat to no babka. <laughs> People love cinnamon. It should be on tables in restaurants along with salt and pepper. And our last word. I saved the best for last because this is my favorite food on the list, and that is filet mignon. This food is actually two words, and the stress is on the second syllable for each word. 
filet mignon. Now, you might be wondering about why is it pronounced this way because of the spelling? Well, this is a French word, filet mignon. It's a steak, it's delicious, it's juicy, succulent, savory. Oh, I really would like to have a filet mignon right about now. I thought I was making a filet mignon. In honor of Paige being home, I made your favorite dinner. Filet mignon. Just because you can have filet mignon doesn't mean that you have to settle for fast food. Now that you know how to say these food words correctly, I want to hear from you. So in the comments, write to me, let me know what is your favorite food? One thing that I want you to keep in mind is that we're, we're taking our time going through these words and practicing your pronunciation. And I want to remind you to do that. Say the words out loud, work on your pronunciation. And with that in mind, I want to look at some common words that are sometimes mispronounced. These are words that you probably already know, but I still want you to practice say the words out loud because most of the time when I hear a pronunciation mistake, it's not always with some long, very advanced word that is not often used. Most pronunciation mistakes that I hear are with common words that you use in everyday English. So let's practice some of these common words that are sometimes mispronounced. This is a really good lesson. Today we have 10 words. They're very common words, but they're also a little bit difficult to pronounce. Some because they're a little long, others because they have a whole bunch of vowel sounds thrown in there. So it can be a little bit confusing. Number one is exhausted. This is a really, really common word. Exhausted, it means tired. The X sound sounds like a like a g, like a g sound. We say exhausted. The other reason why this word is difficult is because the H is silent. So when you see it, just ignore the H and it's exhausted. And the third reason why this word is hard to pronounce is because of the ED at the end. In this case, we say it, uh, it's exhausted. Say it with me, exhausted. She was exhausted, but couldn't sleep. Number two, brewery. Yeah, that's right, you heard me right. It's, it's hard to say. So if you don't know what a brewery is, it is where um, people brew beer. This one, even just saying it, it's obvious why it's, why it's difficult to pronounce, and that is because of the R sounds. R, R. It's very, very faint, a very soft R sound, which in itself could be a very difficult uh, sound to pronounce. The second reason why this can be difficult is because uh, right after the first syllable, we have a schwa sound, which is a shortened vowel sound. And of course, in the, the third syllable, you have the, another R sound, which is a little bit more pronounced than the first sound. Bru uh, ri, brewery. When you say it, they all kind of mesh together. Brewery. Say it with me. Brewery. We took a tour of the brewery. This is true. Wes and I took a tour of a brewery a few years back and it was a lot of fun. Brewery. The third word is a little bit long, which makes it difficult to say. Uh, this word is Antarctica. Basically what you have to do is you have to kind of break it down when you say it. You can start with the first syllable which is and. The second syllable is arc. Keep in mind that for this word the stress is on the second syllable. Put it all together and you get Antarctica. Ant arc -ca. Say it with me. Antarctica. Now say it really fast. Antarctica. 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 See, it's hard, don't do it, don't say it fast. It's really cold in Antarctica. Number four, phenomenon. This one is hard because it's long, but it's not that hard if you break it apart. Now, we, we can break up this word in four syllables. First of all, the PH sound, uh, it makes an F sound. It's a F. So we have F, NOM, A, uh, NON. The third syllable is a SHRA. Say it with me, phenomenon. The aurora borealis is an amazing phenomenon. Number five, specific. Now, this word can be difficult because of that middle syllable. The C makes an S sound. Now, I know a lot of English language learners may mispronounce the I sound. It is not E, it's not specific. It's a short I sound, so we say specific. Specific. Say it after me. Specific. 
You got it. Say it again. Specific. He needs specific directions in order to fix the boat. Number six, another long word, temperature. Now, if you look up this word, you will see that it technically has four syllables, temperature, but I think most people pronounce it with only three syllables. So we have to kind of shorten everything. We end up saying temperature. In the second syllable, we drop the E completely and we add a schwa, temperature the T and U together are pronounced as a CH sound. Say it with me now. Temperature. Temperature. The temperature was around 25 degrees and the sun was shining. Number seven, rural. This is a hard one. Oh gosh, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing this to you. The R sounds do make the words difficult and this one especially. In the first syllable we have R, and then in the second, we have a R. And of course, there's a schwa in the second syllable, but it's very fast, so you have to be kind of fast with it. So say it with me, please. Rural. Rural. Before moving to the city, he lived in a rural area. Number eight, choir. Now, this is a short word, but it is difficult to say for a few different reasons. First of all, the CH together in this case does not make a CH sound. For example, the word channel makes a CH sound, but not in this case. CH sound together is a K, -k sound. The second reason is that the O sound is an A. Ah. So put it all together and you get choir, choir. My mom sings in the church choir. Number nine is a literature. And this word is a little bit difficult because it's long, first of all. Of course, you have the L and R's, which make this word even more difficult. We have the R and the schwa sound, and the T and U don't make a T sound or a T sound. They make a CH sound, just like in temperature. So we have literature. Say it after me. Literature. Literature. My favorite subject in school was Russian literature. Number 10 is squirrel. I used to have a theory that the word squirrel is cute in every language. So I'm kind of curious. Uh, please, in the comments, let me know how do you say squirrel in your language? Does it sound cute? But the word squirrel, whether you believe me that it's cute or not, it's, it can be a little bit harder to pronounce. It's just two syllables and it goes like this. Squir. And then the second one, uh, squirrel. There's just a schwa sound, squirrel. So let's say it together, squirrel. So cute. When I was in college, I would often stop to feed the squirrels on campus. Okay, so now that I've told you the words that I think are difficult to pronounce, I want to hear from you. In the comments, please let me know what other words do you find difficult to pronounce? So far, we've talked about quite a few individual words. Now, we want to teach you some words that are very specific. And what I mean is that we're going to teach you how to pronounce 25 brand names in American English. And I want to be very clear about that because we are going to give you the American pronunciation of these brand names. And if a brand is not from the US, which some of them are not, the pronunciation in the United States may sound different than the original name. Americans like me may bastardize the pronunciation. And in case you're unfamiliar with this word to bastardize something, which may be used when talking about language and pronunciation, it means to change something in a way that fails to represent the values and qualities that it is intended to represent. This may happen with language when pronouncing certain landmarks or cities, or, or in this case, popular brand names. So I, I wanted to give you that disclaimer but let's go ahead and begin. We're going to talk about brand names and how to pronounce them. So a while back, we received a comment from somebody who asked, I hope you guys can create a video that will teach us how to say some brands correctly. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. Keep in mind that a lot of these brands are not from English speaking countries. And that means that Americans like me will take the name and the pronunciation that it is intended to be, and we will bastardize it and 
mispronounce it and then it just becomes you know mainstream so we'll explain a little more as we go along but right now um let's begin number one ikea i i think that anybody who is not from sweden possibly pronounces this wrong because in sweden they they say if i ikea um and even maybe i still might be mispronouncing it but if you're in the us or or britain i think most people pronounce it ikea and that's what they understand ikea yeah get you some end tables and some of the five dollar lamps man so if you were to say i'm going shopping today i got this new stuff from ikea people in america would be like where is that okay number two nutella uh, correctly, it's Nutella, and that's how I say it because I love it and it's my favorite. But Americans like Wes will say Nutella. So it's similar, <laughs> but there's a little. Nutella is my favorite brand so far because of all the chocolate, of course. She even has a shirt. Number three, Coke. Now, this is perhaps one of the most famous brands in the world, and most of us, I think, know how to pronounce it, but make sure that you are saying it with the long O sound, Coke. We had a student a while back who pronounced it with the short O and kept saying cock, all right? That means something different. It is slang in English for... I remember he was telling us a story that he went out to a restaurant and the waitress asked him, what would you like to drink? And he said, I would like some cock. And it, it, it just, yeah. In the end, he eventually did get his Coke. So everything worked out and I'm pretty sure he's pronouncing it correctly now. This is, you know, it's a very innocent mistake, but, and this is how pronunciation um, can cause a lot of confusion um, among different people. Give me cock. Oh, please give me cock. I want a cock. It's uh, Coke. Number four, Tommy Hilfiger. Uh, because this is a name, uh, I think people may mispronounce the last uh, the the last name. The first name, I think it's easy. Tommy, everyone knows that. But Hilfiger might be a little bit more confusing. So that's how you pronounce it. Tommy Hilfiger. Number five, Hyundai. Or as I think a lot of Americans say, Hyundai. And this one, it's... Hyundai or Honda? Hyundai. It, it's, it, this is a Korean brand. So uh, again, it takes on a very different pronunciation. I'm not really sure why, but that's just the way it is. Number six, Nike. Uh, now I've heard people say Nike before. Uh, they dropped the E, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. That's what you it think looks like. It, it looks like, but it's not. Uh, it's actually Nike uh, from the old Greek goddess, actually. Nike. And because it's an American company, I guess this is the correct pronunciation. Looks like Nike, but we say Nike. Number seven, Adidas. Uh, this is a German company, and it's actually a portmanteau, which is the combination of two words. So you have Adi, which is the nickname of Adolf, and Das from Dossler. Adolf Dossler, who is the person who started all of this, Adidas. So if you're looking for this shoe, it's Adidas. Number eight, Sephora. Uh, with this word, just make sure you know that the PH makes an F sound. Sephora. This is one of Yuana's favorite brands. Oh yeah, I could live there. Number nine, Porsche. So in the US, a lot of people either say Porsche or even shorten it and say Porsche but uh, apparently the the company even made a video as to how pr pronounce this a while back Porsche 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 I think in the US if you said you want to buy a Porsche people would probably ask you what that is. Again, I think a lot of native English speakers would say Porsche or Porsche. Mm -hmm. We don't drive a Porsche or a Porsche or a Porsche. Mm -hmm. Number 10, Louis Vuitton. And in French, it's Louis Vuitton. I don't <laughs> say it wrong again. How, is it? How does that go again? I don't know. Say it again. Vuitton. Okay. Louis Vuitton. 
But I would say Louis Vuitton because. But I I don't know the American. French. I'm not French either, so I'm Louis Vuitton. Anyway, it's Louis Vuitton. Yeah, many native English speakers would say Louis Vuitton. My very own Louis Vuitton. Number eleven, Samsung. It's a Korean company, so I think the the correct pronunciation technically would be Samsung. But a lot of people, English native English speakers. Um, would say pronounce it Sam and not Sam, so they'd say Samsung. But if you did say Samsung, um, people will still know what you're talking about. What kind of phone do you have? I have a Samsung. What kind of phone do you have? I have an iPhone. Ah. <laughs> Number twelve, um, Versace. Now uh, the correct pronunciation in Italian is Versace. But if you're talking to somebody who is uh, a native English speaker and you want them to understand you, you'd say Versace. There you go. The E at the end, Versace. Mm -hmm. Do you have a Versace? No, too expensive. Number 13 it is a car company and it is pronounced Chevrolet. I'm not really sure the history behind uh, this word. The spelling is not necessarily like it sounds, especially the T at the end. Uh, it's not pronounced, so we just say Chevrolet. Um, or Chevy. Yeah, or you could say Chevy for, for short, um, not Chevrolet. In my broken down Chevrolet. Number 14, Stella Artois. Uh, or Beer. you can just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. You can just say Stella, um, but I mean, I, I think it's pretty close to the actual French pronunciation. Stella so. Artois. Yeah, so yeah. Stella. Stella I'll Artois. I have a Stella. Yeah. So if you want a beer, it's a Stella Artois or a Stella. Mm -hmm. Some, you know what I mean, don't you know? Stella Artois. Number 15, Adobe. So this is a word that many of you might know from computers and it's pronounced Adobe. So that first A is the schwa, a uh, sound, and the E at the end is the long E sound. It's not Adobe, it's not Adobe, it's Adobe. Or adobe, I can see or people ado say adobe. adobe? Not bay, just adobe. adobe. I can adobe. see people say that. Okay. Please don't ignore me like I was just some update from adobe. Number 16, Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, now this is a really long name, so it's uh, mispronounced many times, uh, but that's the correct pronunciation. Actually, Wes, I think, says Finch, but it's not Finch, <laughs> it's Abercrombie and Fitch. I uh, used to, but from now on... No more. Uh, the T is silent, so keep that in mind, in, the, in Fitch. Abercrombie and Fitch. Number 17, uh, Volkswagen. Um, this is a German car company, so I think in German they would pronounce it uh, Volkswagen. Oh, is that pretty good? Yeah. I think so. In the US, uh, a lot of native uh, English speakers would say Volkswagen, so you'd hear that, that W sound in there, Volkswagen. Volkswagen is That's what. That's how they say it. What, like the back of a Volkswagen? Volkswagen! Have you ever had one? No. I like the buggies, the old, like, 60s. Number 18, anthropology. Uh, now, this is French sounding, so um, I've heard people say anthropology. Uh, <laughs> but it's anthropology. It's an American company, uh, so it's anthropology. It just looks fancy. It's, Do you it's shop there? No, it's so expensive. Like one thing is like $400. Yeah. Number 19, Huawei. This is a company from China whose pronunciation, again, not like it sounds. I think a lot of people would say Huawei. They would pronounce the, the H, even though I think it might just be Huawei. And I should probably know this because, boom, I have a Huawei. He's very proud of it. I am very proud of my Huawei. Now let's see if they'll be able to pronounce it. How would you pronounce this word? Howie? Hawaii? Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> hey, this was okay. This was, it was, it, it, it does the job most of the time. Number 20, Levi's. Um, this is actually another one of my favorite brands um, because they're classic um, jeans and it's just, they fit really well uh but it's not a uh, levy or levy strauss levy, yeah. or it's just levi's girl you got the beat right killing me you levi's high on your lovers got me buzzing like a street number 21 for all you beer lovers out there budweiser you can find it all over the world uh but the correct pronunciation is budweiser or i guess you could shorten it and say bud can i help you yes 
I'd like a Budweiser, please. Number 22. H&M. Uh, now, H&M is different in each country, I think. So I know in Romania, for example, some people say H&M. Um, because, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. H&M in English. So if you want to find the store, and we all know we love H&M, because it's cheap and trendy. There you go. That's where you go. Just, H&M. Just pronouncing the two letters as they are in the English alphabet. Yep. Number 23, Jack Daniels. Uh, this is a whiskey brand. So if you're out and you want to get some whiskey, it is pronounced Jack Daniels. I know I've heard some people, depending on where they are, like in East Asia, Daniel, but Daniel, Jack Daniels. Or you could just say Jack. Yeah, Jack and Coke. Uh, yeah, Jack and Coke. Or if you would like Jack, it, Jack and Cock. No. <laughs> Jack and Cock. No, you don't want to say Jack and Cock. Or if you like ice in the drink, you could say, I'd like some Jack on the rocks, mm. which is another expression for you. Ice on the rocks. It's two Jack Daniels, one on the rocks, and a Heineken. Number 24, Nestle. Uh, now, this is another European company, and I think correctly it's Nestle, but um, Americans will pronounce it Nestle. Nestle. Yeah. yeah. Nestle. Again, you don't pronounce the T. Nestle. 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 Good, good, good chocolate stuff. Win this one, and there's Nestle Quick for everyone. Quick? Nestle Quick? I gotta have you, Nestle Quick! Number 25, Corona. This is a beer from Mexico, so the pronunciation, Corona. A lot of native English speakers would just say Corona. 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 So if you'd like to try a Mexican beer, you can order a Corona. More of a Corona man myself. Now what we'd like you to do is write and tell us your favorite brand in the comments below. Let's continue with another more American pronunciation lesson. And this time we're, we're really going to focus on the United States because I want to teach you how to correctly pronounce all of the U.S. states. And I think this is helpful if you're planning to travel to the U.S. or you're just having a conversation and talking about the U.S. But there are 50 states and some of them are often discussed in conversation. So let's learn how to pronounce all of the state names correctly. I think many of you out there may be familiar with the different states in the U.S., but do you know how to pronounce them all correctly? I'm from the U.S. Secrets out. And the reason I'm telling you this is because often when I tell people I'm from the United States, people will ask where. You know, a lot of people around the world are, are confident with geography in the U.S. They're familiar with many of the different states. But from time to time, as we're, we're talking about the U.S. and places to visit and places that people may have been or they want to go, I may hear them talk about a state and they'll, they'll have a slight mispronunciation. Maybe they're stressing the wrong syllable or, or they're just saying it incorrectly. So I thought today would be a good time to talk about each state and show you how to pronounce them correctly. So I'm going to tell you the state. I am going to tell you how many syllables each word has. I will show you the phonetic spelling and the IPA version as well. So all of that means that by the end of this lesson, you will be able to say each and every state perfectly. The first state, and I'm, I'm just going to go through these alphabetically, is Alabama. It has four syllables and the stress is on that third syllable, that bam. Alabama. And if you're in Alabama, you might hear people pronounce it with a rather strong southern accent, Alabama. I was actually born in Alabama. No, it's true. I was. I've lived in quite a few of these states, so I'll, I'll let you know. The next state is Alaska. It has three syllables. The stress is on that second syllable. That final syllable just has that schwa, Alaska. It is a beautiful state. If you love the outdoors, I highly recommend it. I worked up there for the summer. It's gorgeous. Then we have Arizona. It has four syllables. The stress is on that third syllable. Arizona. Zo, zo, zo. Arizona. Not much to say about Arizona, except it's hot. Next is Arkansas. Three syllables. Stress is on that first syllable. Arkansas. This is a common one that, that people have a little trouble with because, again, don't don't think of the spelling. Don't try and pronounce it based on the spelling. You could get all screwed up. That final syllable, saw. Saw. 
Arkansas. Next is the most populous state, and that is California. It has four syllables, stresses on that third syllable, California. Sometimes if you're very cool, you just shorten it to two syllables and just say Cali, Cali. You know, I used to live in Cali. <laughs> no. I've just been informed that nobody cool says that. Then we have Colorado. This state has four syllables. The stress is on that third syllable. Even though it's R-A-D, it's Colorado, not Rado. Colorado, the Rocky Mountains, beautiful state. I did my university there, University of Colorado, go Buffs. Next is Connecticut. This is another one where the, the spelling can, can throw off the pronunciation a little bit if you're trying to say it how it's spelled, but Connecticut has four syllables. The stress is on that second syllable. Connecticut, Connecticut. I also used to live in Connecticut. Now that I think about it, I've, I've lived in quite a few of these states. Next is Delaware, has three syllables, stresses on that first syllable, Delaware. I don't know anything about Delaware. I've never been there, I've never lived there. So let's just move on to the next state. Florida, it also has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Florida, it's the sunshine state. My parents live there now, known for its beautiful beaches, Florida. Next is Georgia, two syllables, stress on that first syllable, Georgia. Or again, if you're in the South, if you're in Georgia, people might say Georgia. I also used to live in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> I'm sure people are like, wait, that's not how we say it in Georgia. It's just Georgia. My Southern accent's pretty bad. Then we have a state that I would like to live in. And I think many people romanticize this state. It's our only island state. Hawaii it has three syllables, stresses on that second syllable, Hawaii. And again, the spelling can, can throw off the pronunciation a little bit, but yeah, just remember Hawaii. Then we have Idaho has three syllables, stress is on that first syllable, Idaho. Idaho, when I think of Idaho, I think of potatoes. That's what the state's known for, Idaho potatoes. Then there's Illinois, also three syllables, but the stress is on the third syllable. Illinois. Again, the spelling and the pronunciation can get a little crazy. That last syllable, that final syllable, Noi, Illinois. The next state, Indiana, has four syllables. Stress is on that third syllable, Indiana. I think many people might be familiar with this famous movie, Indiana Jones. Not really have anything to do with the state, just the name. So let's just move on to the next one, which is Iowa. Iowa has three syllables and the stress is on that first syllable. Iowa. Again, Iowa spelling, pronunciation, a little crazy. Iowa. That second syllable has that schwa. Iowa. And when I think of Iowa, I think of corn because there's a lot of corn in Iowa. The next state is Kansas, the great state of Kansas. Two syllables, stresses on that first syllable, Kansas. And what I have to say about Kansas is nothing really. I drove through there once, it, it was a long drive. So let's just keep driving on through to the next state, which is Kentucky. This word has three syllables, stress is on that second syllable, Kentucky. Kentucky. The next state, Louisiana. It has five syllables. The stress is on that fourth syllable, that and, Louisiana. And when I think of Louisiana, I, I start thinking of food. I think of that gumbo, Louisiana, known for their gumbo. And while we're on the topic of food, our next state, Maine, has one syllable, just one, Maine. Maine, I also think of food, I think of lobster when I think of Maine. And then, again, let's just keep going, Maryland. This state has three syllables, the stress is on that first syllable, Maryland. It's not Mary, you don't really hear that Y, it's just Maryland. Also think of food, crab, Maryland has great crab. Then we come to Massachusetts. Not a food state. Well, actually, no, no, that's not true. There is New England clam chowder there, which is pretty amazing in Massachusetts. They also have four syllables and the stress is on that third syllable, that chew. Massachusetts. When I think of Massachusetts, you know how people from each state have, have names? Like if you're from Georgia, then you're Georgian. If you're from California, then you're Californian. If you're from Massachusetts, then you're a masshole. <laughs> I don't know why I always, I always laugh at that joke. 
I guess if you're from Massachusetts, you probably don't think it's funny. Then we have Michigan. The state has three syllables, stress is on that first syllable, Michigan. And very close to Michigan is Minnesota. Four syllables, stress is on that third syllable, that so. That second syllable is just the schwa, Minnesota. There's also a pretty distinct accent in Minnesota. Minnesota, Min Minnesota. Gosh, I am just terrible at accents. Minnesota, Minnesota. Minnesota, okay, I'm just gonna, uh, just, let's, let's just move on. Then we have Mississippi. This state has four syllables. The stress is on that third syllable. That second one's just that schwa, Mississippi. Mississippi. After Mississippi is Missouri. This state has three syllables and the stress is on that second syllable. Missouri. Missouri. That S is going to have more of that Z sound. Missouri. Then we have Montana. Three syllables. Stress is on that second syllable. Montana. Montana. Another beautiful state. Gorgeous mountains. Montana. Near there is Nebraska. Three syllables, stress is also on that second syllable. Nebraska, Nebraska. Not really mountains in Nebraska, sorry. Next we have Nevada. It has three syllables, stress is on that second syllable. Nevada, and when people think of Nevada, I think most of us think of Las Vegas, Sin City, gambling, Nevada. Next is New Hampshire. Two words, three syllables. The stress is going to be on that first syllable in the second word, looking at Hampshire. Now, that last syllable, it's not Shire. It's not like Frodo in the Shire. It's sure. New Hampshire. New Hampshire. I also, for a very short time, lived in New Hampshire. Live free or die. That's what it says on the license plate. Check it out. Next, we have New Jersey. Three syllables, stress is on, well, the first syllable of the second word, that jer, New Jersey. New Jersey, again, a state that I think probably has a more distinct accent, Jersey. A lot of times people will just say that second word, just Jersey. Where are you from? Jersey, 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 from Jersey. <laughs> I apologize for these terrible accents, but let's just move on. Next is New Mexico, four syllables. Again, the stress is on that first syllable of the second word, New Mexico, Mexico, New Mexico. Don't know what to say about New Mexico, except yes, it's very hot. Then another very well-known state, New York. Two syllables, stress is on that second syllable, that second word, New York. Often when people think of New York, they may think of New York City first. So sometimes people need to clarify that, no, I'm talking about New York State. New York State, the state of New York. Then we have North Carolina. This state has five syllables, but Carolina, the stress is going to be on that, the third syllable in that word. Carolina, Carolina, North Carolina, another state with a more distinct accent. All my relatives and my parents, they're from North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina. Oh goodness, I'm gonna get raked over the coals for my accent. Then we have North Dakota, four syllables, but Dakota has three syllables and the stress is on that second syllable, Dakota, North Dakota. Then Ohio. Three syllables, stress is on that second syllable. Ohio, Ohio. Let's just keep these O's going with Oklahoma. This state has four syllables and the stress is on that third syllable. Oklahoma, you can hear it emphasize that Homa. Oklahoma, I don't know why I think of cowboys. Next is Oregon. Three syllables, stress is on that first syllable. Oregon. That last syllable sounds like gun because it's unstressed, so it's just Oregon. Then we have the great state of Pennsylvania. It has four syllables, stresses on that third syllable. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. And also, I did, I used to live in Pennsylvania. Not bad. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I have to say. Then we have Rhode Island. Three syllables, stress is on that, well, the first syllable of the second word, island, Rhode Island. And no, Rhode Island, it is not an island. It's just called Rhode Island. Then we have South Carolina. These words together have five syllables, but the stress is gonna be on that second word, that Carolina, that third syllable. Again, I, won't, I almost said North Carolina, but no, 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 this is South Carolina. We're not talking about North Carolina, South Carolina. Why are there two Carolinas? 
I have no idea. Then we have South Dakota. This state has four syllables, but the stress is gonna be on that second word, Dakota, that second syllable, Dakota, South Dakota. Moving right along, we have Tennessee. This state has three syllables and the stress is on that third syllable, that final syllable, Tennessee, Tennessee. After that is Texas, two syllables, stress is on that first syllable. Texas. It's one of the biggest states and people in Texas like to say everything is bigger in Texas. I don't know why they say that. It's just an expression from Texas. Then we have Utah. Two syllables stresses on that first syllable. Utah. After that is Vermont. Also two syllables, but the stress is on that second syllable. Vermont. Vermont. Next is Virginia. Three syllables, stress is on that second syllable, Virginia, Virginia. And an expression with this state, people say Virginia's for lovers. Don't know why, not sure exactly what it means, but I guess Virginia's for lovers. Then we have Washington, three syllables, stress is on that first syllable, Washington. Sometimes people may confuse it with the capital, Washington DC, which is not a state, it is a district, District of Columbia. Next is West Virginia. This state has four syllables, but again, the stress in that second word, that Virginia is on that second syllable, West Virginia. If you say it quickly, you really almost don't hear that T at the end. It almost sounds like you're saying my name, West Virginia. Then we have Wisconsin. This state has three syllables and the stress is on that second syllable, that con, Wisconsin. People think of Wisconsin, they think of cheese. It is the cheese state. Finally, there is Wyoming. Also has three syllables and the stress is on that second syllable. Wyoming, Wyoming. There you have it. That is the pronunciation of each state. So now that you have all this information, you can say each and every state perfectly. So you just learned over a hundred different words. And I know it's a lot to take in, but the more you hear these words and practice saying them, you're going to greatly reduce the possibility of making even a slight mistake. So if you enjoyed this mega pronunciation lesson, you can let me know by hitting the like button. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. So long.